Hi, this is Ibon Studio Podcast Show, episode 22. I am your humble host, Kalex. It is Carmela's second part episode where she uncovered all the different aspects of products and services. Create your product from start to finish, which is your MVP, and that you can go to angel investor or venture capital to secure funding for your startup. But initially, we're not going to be taking any equity. What we are doing uh, in, in the process is we are raising capital uh, for our, our entrepreneurs that are going to be a part of the accelerator, such that we are able to then uh, offer um, some help, you know, some some funding to help them to get their products actually developed or or created or manufactured once they actually finish the program. But you know, uh, raising capital takes time. We want to we want to work on them and, and do it in a diligent way. So we're making sure that we are, you know, being cognizant of the time and, and uh, pacing ourselves to. Actually actually raise the capital we need for our uh, inventors and innovators. Nice. We want to know more about your interest sharing and some effective growth hacks. You helping, for example, I have a product and you want me mm-hmm. to be sharing this product with my audience. So give me the idea of well, what you expect from the founder. Yeah. The first step is, um, you know, when you're sharing your idea with anyone, of course, uh, the first step is to protect your idea, right? Through um, a non-disclosure agreement, right? before you start sharing and letting people know what you're doing. Um, so I would say that's the first step. And the second step is to uh, make sure that um, the product that you're developing um, has a way of uh, reaching the right people that you're actually um, going to be um, exposing it to. So, yeah, so in terms of making sure that it's in front of the right people and making sure that you have the right people in terms of your uh, team that's working with you in terms of your idea, the development, the design uh, is solid because uh, if you don't have a designer who's really has experience in user experience design, uh, it's really difficult to make sure that the experience of your users when they're, when they're engaging with their product um, is one that is uh, intuitive, makes sense, and doesn't uh, frustrate your, your users. And so um, I think that's really important. Uh, also, I think, as I mentioned earlier about um, funding, that, uh, you know, that you don't align yourself with people who are just um, um, provide, you know, get you funded or have you go out and get seeking funding right away. I think it's really healthy for any company to spend a little bit of time, at least a little bit of time, to do a, some bootstrap and, and make sure that they have the ability to attain or to attract the right clients to their product before going to venture capital funding. And they will find it attractive. Uh, well, you know, for you to do that in, in general. Tell, tell us what resources that help you all, a mentor that helps you along your journey. Um, yeah, I, I would say that the best uh, resource is, is really to find some sort of coaching or mentor, or as you mentioned, um, even the free accelerators that you mentioned or incubators that, that you may uh, come across. Um, the only thing I would be careful of in, 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 in terms of you know, incubators and accelerators is that um, when they talk about, you know, for exchange, they usually take equity. That's why they're free. And so uh, you may want to be careful as to how much equity and kind of evaluate, you know, what that means for in terms of your business. I often see people, you know, go to these incubators and they go from one incubator to the other, you know, racking up uh, equity, um, you know, in terms of giving away to their company. It's kind of chipping away. So if, if and when their company does go reach some sort of success, you know, a big portion of that success goes back to the people who have equity in their in their business. So, um, so they don't really have as much success as they had expected or anticipated uh, because along the way they've been given away a lot of their equity. And so you want to be careful about that as you're moving forward and um, uh, launching your product. You're right. So far we heard quite a bit from you. You have very big ideas. You have an accelerator. You do your job very well. Uh, you have some big name clients on your website like it. TNT, Oracle. How did you get this? Um, well, I worked for Oracle initially, and then I and so uh, when I was leaving them, um, I partnered with them um, as a consultant, and so I did that um, with all the companies I've actually worked for in the past uh, because it's kind of low hanging fruit, right? Because if you already know, it's really working with the people that you already know and kind of going in your backyard and and forging relationships that that you've already built, as opposed to starting one that's you know something that new, especially when you're just starting out. So that's what I did first. All right. Uh, so you told us you were. Uh, engineer or you started um, after quitting your job in 2011 mm-hmm. you pretty much nailed the fact that founders can actually trust your process which you create a framework and a roadmap when it comes to launching the product and even helping them pitch for raising capital you are excellent for 
uh, when it comes to accelerators and their job you do is great. So let's go to the final three questions. Richard would like to answer it as quick as you can and uh, we will close that interview. The first question is, what advice you would like to give someone who wants to follow a career similar to yours? Mm-hmm. Well, uh, first I would say that you have to, have a, um, if you have a passion for uh, people and um, product design and products in general, uh, I think that that's a, a career that you should go after. This one is a career you should go after. The first thing I would do is to research online what a product owner or a product manager or user experience uh, are. What are those intangible things? And then maybe focus on one or two technologies that make sense to you. If you're interested in creating products around um, artificial intelligence or you're interested in creating products around data security or interested in robotics or if you're interested in um, you know, biometrics or things like that, you know, look at you know, what areas of technology have the, the, are, are really triggering the most interest for you. Uh, and then also the types of people that you want to work for. Um, um, so you may have an idea or have some um, interest in working with clients that are, you know, businesses, or you may want to work for clients that are in the corporate space or government space or healthcare, or you may only want to work with technology that's in the educational space. And so think about the sectors of which you want to work within as well. Uh, and then from there, I would still, like I mentioned, uh, look at uh, what user experience is, what does it mean in terms of user experience, look at the UX side, I mean, user experience, and also the UI side, the user interface side in terms of design um, and think about, do I want to do it out? Do I want to get into this space as a designer? Am I interested more in strategy, like strategizing um, what would be best served as products or placement in, in terms of user acquisitions and positioning? Or am I interested in development of that? Or do I want to just be a part of that overall team and manage that whole process? So just kind of think about the various components uh, and the evolution of a product and what it takes to go from idea to a product in the market and look at all the players that are involved. You have the developer, you have a product manager, you have a product owner, project manager, developers, designers, testers. You know, who are those people that best suit my characteristics in terms of who I am and what I bring to the table and my interests? Uh, and again, look at the technology in particular that is more pertinent to you, your personality, your, your, your personal interests and focus on those areas. Got Answer the two orders a little faster if you can. <laughs> Sorry? I said if you can answer the two orders a little faster, it would be good for us. We are still have two minutes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you elaborate uh, deeply and you give a lot of detail. That's the good thing about you. Uh, audience you. will appreciate that you talk about the actual innovative part of the real concept that we have to go through and the day-to-day activities we have to be encouraging ourselves to immerse ourselves deeply mm-hmm. into in order to be a real good founder and a product developer. So we appreciate that. The second question is, uh, what is the one thing you knew you should have known before for beginning your career? Mm-hmm. Well, that's a really good question. <laughs> uh, I probably should have known that I am not, uh, I lo- I'm a big picture thinker um, and a futurist thinker. I like to think in terms of what, what is coming next. Um, you know, what, what will we, how will we be working in the future? How will we, will we be learning in the future? You know, how will education and, and, and medicine and um, you know, things that we do today, how will that change future? You know, that for me is a very big part of what I do and what I absolutely love doing. And when I first started my career, I didn't do a lot of that. And I was very unhappy <laughs> as a result of that because I had to stay pretty much in the present uh, and, and the future thinking wasn't part of the, of the work that I was doing. And so it was a mismatch there. So I think in terms of you know, really understanding who you are as an individual and what your true interests are, your really true authentic interests, not what your mom wants you to be or your dad wants you to be or having letters and degrees of such to please people externally. But what do you really want to do? What kind of value do you want to really bring to this world? And when you leave this world to say, I made a mark on this space, you know, while I was there, my life meant something. It was something that was tangible. It was something that was meaningful. It was something that really gave value to someone else's life because that's what products do. And that's what your life does when you're living in the way that's authentic to just you. And so to me, really looking at yourself and saying, okay, what do I really, really like to do? What is it of value that I bring to the table in any setting? And then go from there. That's your North Star. Great answer. I love it. Uh, 
Last question. Do you think you were born for a reason in this world? Absolutely. <laughs> Everybody Why? <is>. Why? <laughs> Why? Um, I don't think I would have, you know, of all the billions of cells and eggs <laughs> um, as, as part of that process, um, mm -hmm. I was uh, one that was fertilized. So I think um, no matter what's happening in life, um, you know, challenges certainly is, is what really brings me back to that phenomenon because it is a phenomenon that, you know, given the the almost really almost impossible uh, to predict that one would be would come out of, you know, the, the millions and billions of, like I just mentioned, eggs and cell, uh, 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 sperm cells, um, that, it, that I was one of the people or one of the humans that were actually formed from that. I think in itself is a miracle and I think it's something that um, even when life throws me challenges, I have to remember that I'm here for a reason. And it, it could not have been any other way but me being here. And so, you know, the better way for me to then uh, manifest my life in a way that's meaningful and fruitful is to make sure that I'm always being honest with myself and moving in the direction that is you know, where life is moving and taking me to. Right. Great, Daniela. Good interview. I really admire your sense of purpose. You actually make a lot of reasoning positively acceptable for our audience, and we would love to have you again. So by doing yeah, that, one, <laughs> one of the ways that our audience can find you is through mindcatalyst.com. What other yeah. ways do you want yeah. them to contact you? Sure. So it's Mind Catalyst. That's with a K. Uh, they can also reach me I'm, I'm at Mind Catalyst on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, as well as Instagram. And um, yeah, they can reach me there at any time. Um, uh, I'm also available via email at A-J-A-S-I-N-C at Mind catalyst.com that's my email address uh, and also of course you can also get that information on my web on my website as well um, there, there I do have my mind catalyst website but I also have a carnella jasmine.com website as well great thank you I appreciate yeah. you thanks again nice having thank you. you so much take You're care welcome. all right thanks for listening to iBorn studio podcast show with your host Calix if you like our show give us a review we want to thank our sponsor free conference call service who made it possible for these interviews. You can contact us via ibonstudio.org or support us on anchor.fm forward slash ibonstudio. Thank you for all your comments.